for today's lecture. As I mentioned, uh, this is basically the last type of track to test called unconsolidated hundred track to test. So we're going to go over that today. And unconfined compression test is a special type of QU test. So first, this unconsolidated undrained track to test in stage one, this is where you apply that confining pressure we call chamber pressure sigma three. In, in unconsolidated undrained test, we keep the drainage closed. So the drainage is not permitted. Thus, this is unconsolidated. So that's what the first letter refers to. It's an un unconsolidated first stage. And then in stage two, we shear the specimen to failure by that divitor stress on top. And during the stage, again, the drainage is prevented. You keep the drainage closed, that creates an undrained condition in the specimen. So that's what the second U refers to. So it's undrained during the shearing stage. And because you don't need to wait for the forward pressure to dissipate, you're keeping the drainage closed, this test can be performed relatively quickly. So it's also called a Q-test. And the pore water pressure generated during this UU test consists of these two components. The first one, this is B times sigma three. This corresponds to the excess pore water pressure generated during stage one. We apply that confining pressure sigma three. And this is what we define as UC in track suit test. And the second component is A bar times divitor stress. And this is what we define as U delta UD. So that's basically the excess pore water pressure generated during stage two, when you shear the specimen to failure and B and A bar, these two are the Skempton's pore water pressure parameters. So that's UU test. And this test is typically conducted on saturated clays, saturated cohesive soils. And this is based on important property of saturated clays. And for saturated clays, saturated cohesive soil, the divitor stress at failure is the same, regardless of your chamber pressure. This divitor stress at failure, we call delta sigma df. So this delta sigma df is the same regardless of that sigma three value you applied. If you focus on this picture here, so this shows basically the more circle, the total stress more circle. So this is a total stress more circle at failure for three different specimens. So you have three different sigma three values. And because for saturated clays, the divitor stress at the failure is the same regardless of the sigma three, regardless of the chamber pressure. And this, remember this delta sigma df is defined as sigma one minus sigma three. And it's basically that the diameter of the Mohr circle. And if this delta sigma d is the same regardless of, of sigma three, this means that the diameter of the three Mohr circles are the same. And if you fit a failure envelope, if you fit a straight line to these three Mohr circles at failure, this is going to be a horizontal line. So that inclination angle phi, that total stress or undrained friction angle phi is going to be zero because our Mohr circle is the same size. So the radius is the same. And this Mohr Coulomb failure function, sigma times tangent phi, that undrained friction angle phi is zero. So this term is zero. So your failure, this tau f is basically the same as that C value. And this failure envelope, as I mentioned, becomes a horizontal line and this is called the phi equals to zero condition. So this tau f equals to C, and this C we call C sub u, this is called the Andrian shear strength. And this Andrian shear strength C sub u is basically one over two times divitor stress at failure. So that's the radius of the Mohr circle. So this is the Andrian shear strength. It's a very important strength parameters for clays. And then the major and minor principal stress is at failure. This is the effective stress. It's basically the total minus the pull pressure at failure, okay. delta sigma d. And also it's important to keep in mind that this phi equals to zero condition. So that property of uh, same divitor stress at failure regardless of sigma three, 
this only applies to saturated clay sensors. So that's the undrained shear strength C sub U. And that's the UU to XU test. And then there is a special type of UU test we call unconfined compression test. So this UC triaxial test belongs to UU test, but what's special about this is the confining pressure in this case, sigma three is set to zero, which means you don't need to actually apply the chamber pressure. So sigma three is zero. So it's right here at the origin. And then the major principle stress sigma one equals to this QU here. So the first, the shear strength tau f equals to cu. And in this case, this equals to one over two delta sigma df. And this delta sigma df is basically q sub u here. And because sigma three is zero, so this delta sigma d, so this also equals to one over two sigma one minus sigma three. Sigma three is zero. So that's the unconfined compression track. So test the shear strength tau f equals to your undrained shear strength equals to one over two times q sub u. And this q u is called unconfined compression strength. So both CU and QU are important strength parameters for clay or cohesive soil. And from this top equation here, is QU equals to two times CU. So that's the unconfined compression triaxial test. And uh, again, this is a special type of UU test okay, with zero confining pressure. And on the right-hand side, there are two pictures. So this show, two pictures show the, basically the specimen failed during this UC triaxial test. On the top one, this is a specimen fail by shear. And you can see there's a clear shear failure plane. So that's your failure plane in the specimen. The bottom one is a case where the specimen is failed by this phenomenon called bulging. In this specimen, you notice there's basically an expansion towards the bottom, and there's no clear single failure plane in this specimen, but you see a couple failure planes in this bulging zone. So that's basically the last type of triaxial test I want to go over in this chapter, UC triaxial test. And this table here shows the basically the general relationship of consistency with the unconfined compression strength QU. And for very soft clay, you see the QU value, 0 to 25. Then as the stiffness of the clay increases, the unconfined compression strength QU increases as well. So these are basically typical ranges of unconfined compression strength for clays. So that concludes basically all the tracks you test. And um, so the, what's left for this chapter, okay. so this part three, triaxial test, this is, this, is a, this is a core of part three. And we have a couple bullet points left in chapter 12. One is on wind shear test and empirical correlations. And the other one is on sensitivity of clays. And for both of these topics, I'm going to post a short videos. So wind shear test basically is used to determine CU and QU. And also we have some empirical correlations that we can use for that purpose.